Well, we're back and it's time to bring it on with your email questions. So we're going to start with Mr. J that says, what is a funnel minimalist? Well, it, it goes back to the 1920s when uh, a guy named Gretchen Mation, a professor, I believe at Princeton, uh, was describing what they were. And this was somebody who was, uh, you know, uh, adheres to the fundamentals of the faith. And uh, as opposed to the liberals, the, those who departed from the faith and began to play games with the Bible. So uh, the fundamentalists, by that definition, but it has become uh, a term of opprobrium, somebody described as a fundamentalist. I mean, they're hard-nosed and, and uh, uh, obscurantist and all those other nasty terms. Uh, but that's where it started, those who were adhered to the fundamentals of the Christian faith. All right. Okay. Bruce writes in and says, I would like to have to know your take on how to effectively break the generational curses that my children and grandchildren would be recipients of God's blessings. Well, you've got to know that there's a, there is a generational curse. I mean, I don't know how you know it, but uh, uh, there has to be somewhere somebody practicing witchcraft, somebody involved in the occult, somebody who committed murder. I mean, there, there are a lot of nasty things that happen in grandparents and great-grandparents, and it goes down the line. And uh, the way you pray against it, it you, you, you bind the spirit that caused that, and you rebuke it, and you say, we, we renounce this uh, generational curse that's upon us, but we uh, specifically ask God's forgiveness for the sin that was per perpetrated by uh, the guy who was involved in the occult or whatever. But I, I don't know that you need a generational curse. I don't know how you got it. All right, go on. All right, Ivy writes in and says, I've been trying to forgive my husband for cheating on me. We've gone to counseling, but I just can't seem to forgive, nor can I trust. How do you let go of anger, and how do you trust again? God says to forgive, but it's been so hard to do. I want to forgive so we can get on with our lives. So what do you think? Well, that's a good question. I think forgiveness can be one of the most difficult things in the whole wide world to do, and especially when it comes to a spouse, because that's one of the ultimate betrayals. All right, here's the secret. Okay. And this is the secret. Stop talking about the cheating. He cheated on you. Well, he's a man. Okay. So what you do is begin to focus on why you married him in the first place, on what he does good. Does he provide a home for you to live in? Does he provide food for you to eat? Does he provide clothes for you to wear? Uh, is he nice to the children? Do you have a happy family? Does he take the kids to sporting events? Does he go out and watch their little league games? Um, does he share with you stuff that's going on? And uh, is he handsome or is he, you know, what is it? Start focusing on those things and essentially fall in love with him all over again. And I recommend you reach out and touch him. Touch his face. Touch his face. Hold his hand. Look into his eyes. Talk to him. But it's you, you're praying, oh, God, keep me not to hate him for what he did when he was with that stripper in that hotel room 10 years ago, and I'll never forgive him kind of thing. Please help me. So what are you focusing on? You're focusing on the thing that makes you mad. Stop that. Start focusing on the good stuff. And he must have something good or you wouldn't have married him. So think about those things and give him honor instead of trying to worry about it. But recognize also, like it or not, males have a tendency to uh, uh, wander a little bit. And what you want to do is to make a home so wonderful that he doesn't want to wander. But think of the temptations that are out there. The, the, the Internet is filled with pornography. The uh, magazines are filled with pictures, salacious pictures of women. You, you look anywhere you turn around, there's some solicitation to the senses to entice a man. And so what you have to do is say, my husband was captured. And uh, I, I want to get him free. But reach out and think of the good stuff. And then begin to thank God that you have a marriage that is together and that, you know, you live in America and good things are happening. Okay, next question. All right, Gus writes in and says, my question is, when the rapture happens and people are left, will they have a chance of going to heaven? Okay, first of all, your eschatology is in error. 
you're asking a question based on false eschatology. Your eschatology is that a small group are going to be caught away and everybody else is going to stay and uh, airplanes are going to crash because the pilot got caught up into heaven and the trains are going to run off the tracks and people are going to smash into cars and it's going to be chaos. That's not what's going to happen. When Jesus comes back to earth again and the saints are with him, those who are, remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. But as they come up to him, he's coming down to earth to take charge of things. He's not going to allow it to be in chaos. And that will be the end. And then there will be a judgment of those who are here. And you say, will there be any more uh, attempts? I don't think so. I, I think that people have got their chances right now. But that's what's going to happen, the rapture. It, it isn't this other thing. And I think people are mistaking this idea that there's going to be a secret catching away and then there's going to be a tribulation and then there's going to be all that stuff. That's not what the Bible teaches. All right? All right. Paula writes in and she says, Recently a fellow Christian confided in me that she talks to spirits to test them. She recently prayed for me and turned her head and talked to the spirit. She says that uh, is how she tests them. Quite frankly, I find her actions scary. Where in the Bible does it say to talk to spirits? It doesn't. That's weird. Now, demons talk to Jesus, and Jesus told demons they were in pigs, or in a, uh, uh, a demon-possessed man, they could go into some pigs. But uh, we're not supposed to talk to demons. And uh, you certainly are not, you test the spirits, but you don't do it by talking to them. And anybody that thinks they're going to talk to spirits, believe me, spirits are going to get the best of you. So don't try to do it. It's not, not biblical in my opinion, although there are instances where uh, demons talked, a uh, donkey talked, people talk, but that's not it.